Hi everyone, is this working fine? Yes, perfectly. Okay. Um, I'm Charlene, I'm the manager for the Response Innovation of Uganda. I've been in this role for about two and a half years now. Very happy to be here and I want to recognize the team that has joined on the call and also some of our partners in Uganda. Thanks for joining us today. Um, to dive right in, I wanted to say that for the Uganda lab, this has been a growth, like incredible growth. We, we can add, um, the we've been reaping the rewards of the labor of the, the two years before. Um, we've been able to build up the so in 20 we moved from a team of, to a team of and we've been also able to secure higher level funding. Uh, both for our country level interventions, but also to support the central support units. This has been a big shift. Um, we are now able to shift to larger scale multi-year awards. And it's also been the transformation from being um, uh, a, a reel that was looking for support, that was looking for partners, to becoming one that is contacted by partners that receives requests for uh, partnerships. So um, um, a, a real transformation for, for for the, for the team as a whole. Um, in terms of the funding, I would like to recognize some of the work we've been doing so far. The core funding has been coming from uh, Danida, Norway, and the impact fund, fund from the local country office. And in this year, we've been able to uh, implement small, small scale grants that have allowed us to really be experimenting and innovating. Um, and this is going to, to become even, um, this is going to continue trying to introduce new practices with some of the large grants we've uh, secured and that we have been able to kick off. For instance, a small funding project, very innovative, that we implemented and we're about to close was the facilitation of the Dutch Relief Alliance Innovation Fund um, in Uganda. So, not sourcing innovations for real directly, but helping a donor source innovations for their portfolio, something completely new. Um, and then very special mention to the ULEARN project. The ULEARN project is a FCDO, former GFID um, funded project, which has started this year. And it's the Uganda Learning Evidence Accountability and Research Network. We are both consortium lead, but also we are implementing part of the program, um, that, which is the setup of a, a learning hub, something that is looking at uh, response-wide learning and uptake of that learning. So also something that is stretching a bit the boundaries of what we had uh, experienced doing before, adapting the real model in a very innovative way, if, I, if I'm allowed to say. The, the partnership development has been really critical this year. And um, we've, um, sorry. More. And we've been able to work with Rangio, uh, allowed us to be consortium, is impact as well as we are seeing. We've also been working with engineers without borders, with Mercy Corps, et cetera. Um, working with financial sector deepening in Uganda, working with the Smart Communities Coalition, which is the USAID and MasterCard-backed private-public collaboration focused on uh, supporting more private sector participation in um, response to displacement crisis. With Startup Uganda, which is an, an association in Uganda of ecosystem building organizations, a very fancy terms, um, term that can encompass what real does of trying to build up the ecosystem and then also the ministry of science technology and innovation um, why i refer those is because those um, allow us to to find new entries into the into say the, into um, the ugandan ecosystem just, not just for the response innovation app but also for save the children this has been an opportunity to really develop new um, opportunities. In terms of implementation, also some successes have been um, both on impl implementing funding and non-financial support to innovators. We've now been able to contribute different rounds of seed funding to different innovations, 
um, mostly locally sourced innovations, both with a grant system and uh, now we are starting off a prize system. Um, and what has been interesting is that in the last couple of months, we've been noting the seed investment from the Response Innovation Lab, and this takes time to, to be noted, of course, is coming slowly to, to um, be taken up by others. So we are, we've been able to open some pathways for scale. And one of the great examples would be that when we first implemented clean energy innovations uh, with the Netherlands funding, we identified some partners who supported them. And today, Save the Children is going to be taking them up uh, with their funding that they're receiving from the Dutch Relief Alliance Innovation Fund independently from, from the Response Innovation Lab. So there, there are some ways um, that are really showing success now. We've also been trying to develop further what we can do with non-financial support because the funding has been limited. And we've tried a few mechanisms which have included having a kind of residency for innovators, providing support to, to travel, to, to refugee hosting locations for research for innovators, um, providing expert, like facilitating expert consultations. So things that can help them further their innovation journey without actually injecting money. Challenges, the funding uncertainty, and uh, pardon me for mentioning this, but it's definitely one of our main challenges. Despite the, the had, um, we also have a lot of challenges uh, with small fragmented contributions or contributions that come late and are unpredictable. So it's been a bit difficult to, um, in terms of both uh, establishing the team we need to deliver and also being able to do strategic planning. Some of the mitigation measures we are trying to um, bring along for next year include um, a pooled fund appro approach for small funds and also uh, Save the Children International has agreed to um, underwrite uh, an, an extra position on the team, uh, hoping we can fund it soon. Another difficulty has been also still related to the team setup, difficulties in sourcing the right uh, skill sets um, because humanitarian innovation is a new field in Uganda. So is uh, something like you learn that requires doing response-wide learning. So it's been um, a little bit difficult to attract, find the right candidates. And we need to, to for instance, advertise beyond the traditional um, platforms that Save the Children may be using for recruiting. One of our difficulties this year has been um, our tendency maybe to be too optimistic and significantly underestimating the cost of delivering certain services to a sufficient level of quality. Um, this comes also from being a startup as really itself and, and learning by doing. So we have uh, been sometimes, um, we had to really um, use that core funding to be able to deliver all our uh, promises and become very agile multitaskers and the, the support at the central support unit has been really critical in allowing this to happen. Um, what has been also a journey this year, increasingly successful journey but still complicated, is to continue working with the host entity, in this case I have the children, to adapt the processes and raise awareness within the organization itself of what really is doing. And I mean both at the local level, the country level, but also at the global level. Um, and we probably had underestimated at the very start of the setup of the reel how much this was important. We went for a lot of external outreach without necessarily uh, strengthening the, the support base within. Um, the final challenge I'll mention is that now that the team is growing, the number of awards is growing, we are finding it increasingly challenging to balance between the operational request, the delivery of the operations, and continuing to develop, fundraise, and conceptualize, create really strategic opportunities for the, for the team, while also uh, aligning with the host entity structures, which has a bit of a divide between operational uh, delivery and uh, pro program uh, conceptualization. Our objectives um, for in the two-year horizon, the vision would be to further establish the Response Innovation Lab Uganda as a resource center for challenge and innovators. 
the focus on the lettering and back solution learning. Vision encompasses different awards that we have ongoing and others we intend to secure, uh, including the you learn the you learn portfolio now. To to achieve this, we and this is very much a, um, a process that is still developing. We've identified a couple of building blocks, which include increasing the knowledge base through our support function, um, trend, uh, leveraging a bit the data we've been collecting on the ecosystem, and also support more uptake of. Uh, the learning and the innovations we identify. Try to structure further the mentorship opportunities and the training opportunities we've been experimenting with in the past two years to provide more transparency to the ecosystem of what we can do for innovators. Third point uh, of building up the local executive committee for the Response Innovation Lab, since this is something we haven't been able to do, um, COVID-19 has put us behind on this agenda. And at the same time, the strength of the ecosystem in Uganda, but also the challenge is um, the really high number of uh, partners that with innovation experience um, in, the, in the ecosystem, which makes it more difficult to select one. Uh, we want to also increasingly reach out to strengthen our engagement with local and national stakeholders. We've had a lot of, um, there is a bit of a, split between who applies for funding which is a lot of local and national stakeholders and who interacts with us understanding we're not just a funder which is a lot of international actors so we believe there is a bit of um, um, awareness raising to continue doing and also to, um, to promote to those local stakeholders how much we can help them uh, including with non-financial means we are also really aiming to strengthen connections amongst partners um, this is part of the building different community of, communities of practice, which would be both um, activating the convene function of the Response Innovation Lab and also delivering the learning hub. The matchmaker function has been a bit on hold. Um, it's a function that is very time and resource consuming, which is why we couldn't really move forward with this this year, but hoping to bring it back to the front next year. Again, thanks to the ULEARN program. And then finally, now that we've uh, secured experience and supported by the funding uh, innovations and provided funding in different thematic areas, we're hoping to firm up a bit our strategic priorities, also in coherence with the ULEARN program. Our needs to, for the next two years are centered around funding capacity and communication. Funding for the core team, the non-award specific staff, um, as of January 2021, we only have about 25% of it to sustain three corpus. So, very tough. Investing in building national team capacity to create a response innovation lab that uh, is increasingly localized. And then further strengthen our uh, improvement this year already, thanks particularly to um, Emma coming on board. Um, and, and really forcing us to do this work, and to Max really rolling out the SLIME tool with, uh, with the support of Seoul. So we've come a long way, but um, there is so much we've done and we haven't talked about. We, we can make better case uh, around the work that we'd be able to accomplish, and this should be on our radar in the next two years. That's it from my side. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Sherlyn. Um, can you just quickly highlight your what um, the the Uganda Lab did in response to COVID? Those a few highlight a few of those activities um, for for the group. Uh, sure. One of uh, one very critical one was through the U Learn team. We supported the Ministry of Health in the establishment of a response information hub uh, to to make data and information easily available to the entire response. Um, another one has been support working with Engineers Without Borders um, on an innovation challenge on solid soap dispensers. So um, a local design challenge to source solutions for hygiene. And then thirdly, and this is very much ongoing, we've launched the COVID-19 Innovation Prizes. Um, we actually closed applications um, this morning and we have 82 that we need to review so we can support um, innovations in the field of 
prevention and response, continued education, um, sustained livelihoods and economic opportunities, and refugee-led innovations. Great, thanks, Charlene. Um, question and answer, or questions for Charlene um, about the work that the lab has done or uh, their strategy moving forward? Maybe I can ask a question if that's okay. Uh, hi, Shalane, nice to connect with you again um, and great to see um, how amazing the lab is doing, um, thanks to your leadership. Um, maybe just a, um, a question about like the strategy that you have for, for 2022. So um, great to see all of those uh, aims and, and the kind of um, priorities. If you were to think about the lab in 2022 you know no um no funding challenges or you know your ideal state what would it look like thanks catherine and nice to hear you um i think um we've been we've been leveraging really well the fact that we're hosted by a, a very well-established ingo um but Slowly, we need to further um, establish an, an independent identity that would maybe go through moving out of the office at some point, either in our own space or actually hosted by our local partner. So the lab would be maybe at Innovation Village or one of the other co-working spaces um, in, in Kampala. And we would be having some kind of um, um fixed fixed days where innovat innovators can come for co for consul consultations um so like we can provide really hands-on capacity development for those innovators with whom we establish a, a relationship we would also be um increasingly serving uh the local partners in the response and, pro and promoting local solutions to the stakeholders who are looking for um, to, to solve a challenge. And I think maybe by local, we can look a little bit broader than just Uganda, maybe local like Ugandan and East African solutions as a priority focus. Sounds amazing. <laughs> Thanks, Shannon. <laughs> That sounds like a really uh, good vision, Shalin. Uh, it's Alice, just one more question, maybe related to that vision. Um, do you feel that there's more you can do in terms of maybe working with talent that is not necessarily, uh, that is maybe um, as you're already doing in, in some of the refugee settings, et cetera, working with uh, people who haven't gotten the, really the chance and the access to being part of innovation solutions, uh, drive youth, uh, out of school uh, sort of people. <laughs> Is that something that you are deliberately doing in your strategy now or, or reaching out to to less privileged or, I mean, when we are talking sort of about leaving no one behind and so on, it's not just in by, uh, about uh, reaching people with services, but it's also about yeah, giving opportunities, right, for, for yeah. others than ourselves. Yeah, thank you, Alice. Um, so we've been doing this, and it's been a bit of a, a still experimental process. We've had recently a small engagement with, with IRC, during which we provided um, uh, an opportunity for urban youth, urban refugee youth, and it's, it was a very small cohort of 10 people. Um, then we've been engaging with the Social Innovation Academy, which is working with underprivileged youth and some of the refugee settlements to, to mentor some of their innovators. And now the COVID-19 Innovation Prize is targeting specifically only local uh, innovators, either individuals or organizations, with a special uh, opportunity for refugee-led innovations. 
and the the size of the prizes and the type of application we've we've uh, designed which is quite easily accessible and the and the prizes will be small without heavy reporting requirements means that it will tar it will allow leaving no one behind so um, it's still a bit experimental, but we're increasingly bringing this in. Um, so I, I think as we progress, we're going to have a bit of a um, two-fold two strategy, where one angle is um, increasingly investing in the building the talents and encouraging innovations from wherever they may come. And then the other one looking at larger scale initiatives um, that can bring a more drastic transformation to the um, to the um, um, in humanitarian scene. Thank you very much. And then just one more question. I'm sorry. There was just also about investments in these kind of activities. Do you see any opportunity to actually fundraise at uh, with the private sector in Uganda to support initiatives like that so it's not the NRC or others investing in this uh, going forward but also that is there some possibility to to fundraise uh, in Uganda for these activities uh, private sector funding in Uganda itself might like from Ugandan private sector actors probably difficult um, but we are seeing some opportunities, uh, largely from having become part of Startup Uganda, which is this association of ecosystem builders. For instance, one opportunity that we have expressed interest for right now is backed by MasterCard Lab and is through the National uh, Security Fund of Uganda. So very, very local kind of different funding opportunity, possibly. This is not one at all, we are in the early stage. I'm saying this for, because Richard is here, so he knows, <laughs> I need to be transparent. Um, but otherwise, I, I don't think the, there is money from the private sector to go to real. There could be money from the private sector to go straight to innovators that we help them select. But that would be a bit, um, that would be a bit difficult in terms of sustaining the, the selection process. Okay, yeah, I was just thinking that there were some very, you know, uh, well functioning, you could say, uh, quite a, 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 you know, in East Africa in general, I suppose there's a lot of market in a way for, for and also maybe an, an increasing interest in engaging in, in young talent and, and so on. So maybe, but anyway, but that's, uh, thanks a lot. It sounds very interesting. You're doing, you've gone, come a long way. So, uh, <laughs> Congratulations, Alan. And, and Alice, I just want to say that I think to everyone, uh, we have a session on Thursday around linking with the private sector in our, you know, in, our, in, in the places where we work. So I think we'll have more time. I think this is a really critical discussion. And I hope we, I hope you're able to attend that and if others as well can attend that session uh, to kind of help us think through, uh, you know, how to make those connections. Absolutely. And really, More questions. Yeah, yeah I, I have a question. Charlene, thank you. Thank you for your presentation. You mentioned that one of your challenges is to sourcing human resources with uh, some skills. Uh, I have a question because in Central America we are learning. We are learning uh, also how we can work with the human resources, the internal or local human resources we have, and how to to bring them on board, how important do you see to look for the early adopters to take the challenges and support the development of the Response Innovation Lab? The, the early adopters of the innovations, like stakeholders who could onboard our innovations, you mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yes, we've kind of, um, created um, a group of real supporters in, in Uganda. 
some and particularly some NGOs who are a bit keener to engage and um, um, in some formal formal ways or informal um, like some of those NGOs that are a bit more strongly positioned on the innovation scene um, are more likely to to help uh, in that process and this includes of course working with save the children um, seeing some alignment with their portfolio but also others that we, with whom we have or not a contractual relationship like engineers without borders or irc but um, and also just friendly ngos i would say like mercy corps or uh, action against hunger so we we've been having those or other catholic relief service as well trying to create to nurture with those relationships to to um to, to get their support in uh, like furthering the innovation portfolio beyond the seed funding of the response innovation lab but that's definitely something that i think we can strengthen and when i say it, i think we're not promoting enough what we're doing that's part of it um we've been working with innovators and identifying innovations and solutions and we haven't worked enough on that next step of um, supporting the innovation gets to scale by sharing by, by communicating more and sharing more evidence about those innovations thank you any more questions for charlene We have a question from Sarah. Um, she'd love to hear more about the non-financial support for innovators. What has worked well and what are you still looking to try out? Um, thanks, Sarah. What has worked really well, I think, has been the um, deciding to create the kind of a residency opportunity for one innovator who is now one of our staff member, Sol. Um, I think this has been a very this has been an arrangement that um, consists in having Sol as an integrated part of our team. And he's 50% working on furthering their own innovation, the Safe Bangle, um, with the support from RIL. And 50% he's um, our data and research officer. So it's a kind of um, a win win solution where we get extra HR capacity and he gets extra um, in-house support all week long, let's say. So that has been one of, of course, it's also financial because uh, he has a contract. So it's not for free um, overall, um, but that's a way of not doing a seed funding investment that has been very successful. And I would hope we can do more of this, offer this opportunity to more innovators. So that's part of like uh, making this, um, a more formal offer to the to the ecosystem at some point when we are ready um, what has also worked well was that um, we have been helping research opportunities so right now we have um, we are sending uh, one team to, to some say the children's managed schools where they're going to demonstrate the innovation they have which is a, a seat back a backpack that doubles as a small desk and and see you know in context and collect user feedback in context um, in the field so that's something that we've been able to facilitate at a limited cost because we are using the save the children fleet and um, sending the innovators to a save the children hosting program to interact with the communities that the innovators would like to target and they would have difficulties reaching without us um, yeah, I think those are good examples. Thanks, Charlene. Any other questions for Charlene? Okay. Um, Next up, we're going to move to Somalia, but um, a quick uh, commercial break. If you have to use the restroom, now would be a good time to go. We're going to 